I'm just trying to, I guess, be really honest. And I was kind of raised, you know, to be us against them. We pick up the story of Steve, the man from Renton who admitted to himself and to us he's racist. Steve has been trying to make things right with his daughter, who is half black. King 5's Kristen Ayers has been following Steve for months now. And tonight, Steve asks a question that we have heard many other white people ask us as we've explored issues around race over the past several months. Basically, how long will white Americans be blamed for racism? I know that, that I'm racist and I don't want to be. I don't mean to be. Um... I'm trying not to be. Steve Ramey is coming to terms with what it means to be racist and how it's hurting his family, including his biracial daughter, Caitlin Noble. For months, we've been following Steve. I do say racist stuff. A lot of it's out of humor. He didn't realize how much his jokes were hurting Caitlin. How does it make you feel? Uncomfortable and angry. But with the help of the local race educator, Karina Hook. <laughs> local race educator. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> man, these, these people are creating these great jobs for themselves, man. It's amazing. Yeah. How how racist could he have been if he has a if his daughter's half black? Right. I mean, yeah, it's just it's just bizarre. This is this story is bizarre, man. I, I would offer like there's Asians. nothing funny about it. Steve has just made progress. So I need to look at why I think it's funny. Yes. That and more, why that makes more sense to me and right. why you think it's okay steve thought it would be relatively easy to stop being racist i'm going to tell you a couple things that may be hard to hear he's about to learn that racism doesn't stop with telling off-color jokes and tonight he pushes back because it just feels like everything is he's white white people suck over hours of counseling Steve and Caitlin, Karina Hooks is starting to get to the root of their race issues. For Caitlin, it's discovering her identity as a black woman raised by white. As a biracial woman raised by her fucking father. No, I think, I think I'm getting the feeling. No, it's the mom. I'm having the feeling she's adopted. I don't think she's or, adopted. Or she's I think the she's the mom's daughter. kid yeah. from a. Yeah. I think she's the mom's kid from another marriage. Yeah, well, it's not, I'm getting, I'm to getting the getting root of their race issues. For Caitlin, it's discovering her identity as a black woman raised by white parents. How does she get to step oh. into her beauty and her excellence and find her voice? and still hold on to the relationship she values so dearly with her family. Well, if white women understand the beauty and being around white people, she, she, she should have a jump on the situation, man. It's hard to this do. This bullshit that you have worth because your it. skin color is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, this is, this is crazy. Values so dearly with her family. It's hard to do when her own dad doesn't get it. He isn't about the, like, he doesn't see color kind of thing. We all see color unless we're colorblind. I do see the color and stuff. I guess when I'm saying that I don't see colors, I'm not judging a person by their color. There is in fact but a racist in that, that room. People are judged by their There's color. two. Yeah. No, no, do you know who the racist is in that Caitlin room? Caitlin has been lady. quiet. That's who, that's who the racist in the room is. And, and so but is the now daughter. she wants to lay Yeah, so her, mean, father, her father is, is dirty Harry. He hates everybody. I'm trying to figure out this the dynamic here because I'm looking no, at her. Dad, dad is a liberal. That look, dad is a super duper liberal, and 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 he and if she is if she is the mother's daughter, he took you know he, he brought her into his family. You know what I mean? How how is that racist? No, I'm yeah, saying the daughter is racist. Definitely not the father. Yes. Yeah. Can I explain? I'm Caitlin has been quiet. But now she wants to lay out what's wrong with her dad not seeing her color. It means that if you don't see our, then you don't see our experiences and what we go through as a colored person. Meaning you don't see our like that like the stuff we go through. She's based brainwashed. On our color that we go through. So no, judge me on the color of my skin and not my character. She she got this in college. No, no, she's she's yes. brainwashed. She's brainwashed. She's just telling the same stuff that they. What is she told. going through? Yeah. Let hold on. Let me let me let, let me hear what she's going through. Because of our color. What are some of the identities that you hold? Okay, um, white. Four identities he lists. He's white. He's male. He's a father, and he's over sixty. But if you were to get rid of three of them, which three would it be? Um. 
Uh, I ain't getting rid of white. That, that don't make sense. I wouldn't want to give up the white part because I don't want to be treated the way that white people treat people. With Steve, it's interesting because there is kind of, I don't understand, help me understand. And at the same time, when I ask a question like, what part of your identity would you give up? And he responded, well, I would like to give up being a white man, but I know the consequences. What he does know is that it's better to be white than it is to be black in this country. He said he wouldn't give up being white. That would be stupid. Because then she, didn't she say, what three would you give up? No, I, was, I thought that was strange. Well, that and which which I'd like to know which three this one would give up. Fat, entitled, black. And stupid. Definitely black. wouldn't give up being fucking thirteen percent fucking black. Because hey, put, put, <laughs> put an asterisk by black. He's like he's twenty percent black tops. For the first time, Steve is forced to face what that will mean for Caitlin. When Caitlin steps out of the home into the world, she is judged based on her color, and there are some assumptions that people will make just by the color of her skin. If I make a judgment- What assumptions aside from things that like, okay, if, if she starts getting loud in the fucking Walmart, we probably think, yeah, it's gonna go fucking bad. But if she's just fucking walking down the aisle of the Walmart minding her fucking business, there's no fucking assumption. Nobody's paying any fucking attention. Rock, they, they're being, they're being this, vague. They're being vague and open-ended because yes. they would actually say what thing, what what characteristics they will they will themselves appear to be be the so-called racist. So they won't say what it is. They just they just leave it very vague and open-ended. Well, I mean, and the, the main look. point the main point is that these people say is that if you're not racist, then you're racist. In other words, if you don't see like he probably he brought her up, he never saw her color bringing her up. That's to them. That's racist. And, and Ak, look at the way this girl acts. She was raised by two white people. Look at the way she squirms in that chair. That ain't yeah. black girl magic. <laughs> Based on what I've been conditioned to know, we've been taught that then that must mean we're a bad person. Versus saying, ah, oh, I've been conditioned to believe like black is bad. I've been conditioned to believe that black people should just work harder. And so Hold on. What? Oh, yeah. how dare how dare they expect anybody to work hard? How dare they? I told you that most black parents tell their kids that they have to work hard. They have to be twice as good to get the same. You gotta be twice as good to get the job that the white boy get. You gotta be twice as good to get into the school that the white boy get. And then you take the SATs and, then you, get, and, then, and you get a fucking 900 and the white boy gets the 1400 and you get to school. Now that I know I've been conditioned in that way, let me work to counteract that narrative. When you put it in, in that angle, yeah. yes, every person that walks up, we're going to judge if they're safe or they're not. People all the time will say, I don't see color, but yeah, I don't go over there where the black people are. This is a contradiction. No, it's the violence, man, man. It's the violence over there where the black people are. Right? So it feels like when, it feels like that now that you've said it that way, that I am using that as an excuse to be, um, racist, I guess. Because it just this feels girl, like everything this girl is, is provided with a golden right, upbringing. You know what I mean? You, I can't be alone and think of that. Look at the, look at the stats on Renton. Fifty eight percent above the national average. What well, cost the living? Which means it's a great place. The, it gets five out of five stars. She was brought up in a very nice, wealthy suburb of a wealthy town of Seattle, and she and and, and she never had to worry about getting jumped on her way home. I mean, what the, and, and this guy did, and this guy brought her up like that, and this is what he's getting for that. I, I feel bad for this guy. Yeah, this is a cuck. This is a, this is definitely a cuck we're watching. He's getting, he's getting cucked. <laughs> right? So it feels like when, 
it feels like that now that you've said it that way, that I am using that as an excuse to be um, racist, I guess, because it just feels like everything is white people suck. You know what I mean? I can't be alone in thinking that. You're not. So how long do I got to feel guilty for how my ancestors treated a whole race of people? You know what I mean? And then also, how long is that race going to hold it against me? I'm not a guilt, shame, blame type of practitioner. So I would say guilt and shame and all of that does nothing to forward Bullshit. our humanity or our work in this area. I'm just going to reframe your question, even though it was different. How long am I responsible for what I inherited? And I would say that until your daughter is able to have equitable access to housing, health care, education, what I would bitch? say in your lifetime. <laughs> what the fuck are you so talking about? The fuck they are you freaking talking about? give them houses to live in for. 10% of what it costs anybody else. The fuck? Oh, and, and, and it's not equality. <laughs> it's equity. Equity. And until, your until your daughter gets free shit, which let's admit she's had her whole fucking life already, you're responsible for this entire community. That, that, that fat bitch is a Marxist. I... I, I, I She's a Marxist. That's I a, I'd have got the... up. I, I'd have got up and I said, okay, I will treat you black now to the daughter and walked out. And every fucking thing I bought for her would be the blackest fucking shit I could find. <laughs> her car would have brand new 24s on it. I mean, her clothes would be Hoochie Club clothes. It's. Uh, I was just looking at, looking up the demos, and um, it's very solidly middle class. I'm going to say because they gave different amounts for different parts of the of the town. I'm going to say, you know, mean average income around seventy thousand dollars a year, which is pretty good. It's Boeing built Renton, Washington. Yeah, Boeing. Yeah, Boeing's there in Kenworth. Yep. Trucks. Man, this is insane, man. And, and I would demand she go to HBCU. How old do you think this girl is? She's like 15, 16. Is an active practice daily that makes sure that your daughter, Caitlin, and the Caitlins of the world are able to be seen deeper than the color of one's skin. Tomorrow, Steve and Caitlin are ready to start having the difficult conversations about race on their own, but it won't exactly be easy. We're just sitting there eating at the kitchen or something, and I went, so how does it feel to be black? She goes, shut up. I said, shut up. I'm not supposed to ask that? She goes, no. So Kristen, these conversations, they're not easy ones to have, but it sounds like Caitlin and her dad, Steve, they're going to actually try anyway. Yeah, and he honestly, Drake try. is going to get a little bit uncomfortable, but the race educator Karina Hook says that is where all of the growth really happens. She says when it comes to talking about race, you have to be willing to be a little uncomfortable, to sometimes stick your foot in your mouth, and ultimately to keep coming back no matter what. And that, that is exactly what we're going to be seeing from Steve and Caitlin in, in their final uh, story with us, which uh, will be on tomorrow. Joyce? We've said How this do you before. find People out mistakes, someone's experience okay. without asking them about their it's experience? He has to be psychic. Exactly. No, you, you gliders are supposed to be psychic. You're supposed to know everything. I mean, they, they do treat you. They, they look up to you like you're a god. So, yeah, you should know what their experience is, even though you Jeez, don't know what their life is about. Okay, it, if we're gods, you need to pray to us. It, this, this, guy, it, this guy wasted a lot of fucking money. All week, we've been following a Renton father who has a biracial daughter. He says flat out he's racist, but he doesn't want to be. His name is Steve, and he turned to our Facing Race team to ask, what could he do? 
Christian Ayers has been following him and his daughter as they work with a race educator. And tonight, Steve is about to put all that he's learned to the test as he tries to do something that many of us would shy away from. Did we go, are we going? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's a big deal that this Renton family showed up today. If this was a year ago, Steve Ramey, his wife Alex, and his daughter Caitlin might not have agreed to have a hard conversation with a race educator as a family. Glad to see you all actually here as a family unit. Steve really and Alex don't ever talk about from. being white. Caitlin rarely talks to them about being biracial and the only black person in her white family. But after nationwide calls for racial justice, Steve recently admitted something no one in his family expected. I know that that I'm racist and I don't want to be. I don't mean to be. I'm trying not to be. We've been following Steve for months since he told us that. This is the last of a series of intensive counseling sessions with racial what what he what he is considering as racist is actually prejudice or comedy i mean he makes jokes yeah but <laughs> all right say you're walking down a sidewalk and there's ice right is it black ice no it's just ice <laughs> you you prejudge that ice right walking across that ice right well that's one of those things that black ice is actually more dangerous right <laughs> Damn, man. That's not where I was going with this. But it was no, <laughs> come on, man. It was perfect. <laughs> but listen though, he fucked the white people in this town, man. I mean, he screwed them over by because remember when you're white, your actions speak for your entire race. And when you're black, he they just speak for you. And not not the town. Oh. <laughs> listen, median household income there is ninety thousand dollars. Yeah, it's because Boeing. It's a it's nice, all, it's union, a nice, it's it's all a Boeing nice, union jobs. She grew up in a nice place. She didn't have to look over her shoulder. She didn't get her bicycle stolen. I mean, and now he gets this. Yeah. This is no what you get when you pander to Marxists. This, this is what you get when you pander to Marxists. No, he should, he, he should is in a said. struggle session right now. He should have said, you know, I'm racist. Or I'm trying not to be racist, but it's just too, but it's so much fun. So I can't help but tell so many jokes about, you know, Asian drivers or, you know, a blacks playing basketball, things like that, or white guys can't dance. It's, it's funny. <laughs> At least that's what I would have done. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I mean, still, though, just with him admitting that, like, yeah, I am racist. I see you look they, 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 all of them like that. He just the only one that admitted. So he he all of you guys, man, he fucked. He should have thought. He, he doesn't that. understand he, what racism is either. He's yeah, going he off still, of their definition. He still should have not said that. Sister, I don't want to be. I don't mean to be. I'm trying not to be. We've been following Steve for months since he told us that. This is the last of a series of intensive counseling sessions with race educator Karina Hooks, <laughs> where Steve has been learning how not to be racist. What makes you not the norm is that you're admitting that you're a racist and that you want to change. That's different. He's made progress. He realized the jokes he tells are racist and are hurting his daughter. How does it make you feel? Uncomfortable and angry. And that going through life pretending not to see Caitlin's color. Then you don't see our experiences and what we go through as a person of color. Can be more harmful than simply seeing and embracing her differences. I'm using that as an excuse to be um, racist, I guess. Now, Steve tells Karina he's taken another big step. He attempted to do something he's never done before. Talk to Caitlin about race at home. We're just sitting there eating at the kitchen or something, and I went, so how does it feel to be black? She goes, shut up. I said, shut up. <laughs> I went, I'm not supposed to ask that? She goes, no. It didn't go well. It caught me off guard. He's like a white man, and I'm a woman of color. How is he oh, supposed to? Oh, that's your fucking father, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's the white man that pay your bills. <laughs> right. He, he He's not the fucking slave master of your fucking personal plantation. No, you, know what, you, know what he, you know what he decided? He should just say, you know what? I'm swearing off the race jokes. I'm just doing fat jokes from now on. <laughs> <laughs> it 
She ain't gonna yeah, look because she ain't gonna worry about that. Mm. Now that, now that, that and, and look at who's the racist. All he is to her is a fucking white man. Right. All That's he's what? ever done for he her. Ever yeah. This is, this she is, thinks is owed to her. This is bad. Well, woman of color, how is he supposed to be able to ever understand how I feel. What would be a way that he could have asked you that would have had your response be more in a way where you felt like sharing? I guess he could have just been like, how are you feeling? He didn't really have to add the, he didn't have to really say how to. But you just were bitching that he doesn't see you as a black person and all that you go through. You can't, can't help live me. with these people. You can't help me, man. They got, they got, they got to help themselves. And this shows the bullshit. This this exposes the bullshit of the whole thing. What's up, Georgia? Hey, Ak, I put the um the link to this woman organization in the back chat. Okay. It's it's just a money grab. It's a Marxist money grab. No, no, they what make they make. It's not even Marxist. It is straight up money. If you no, but it's their, um, but it's still their, Marxist. Theory. Their qualifications, they're just um, like one has a master's of social work, the other one has a master's of education, um, there's an MPA, and it's they're not really doing actual therapy, so they're not licensed in that way. They're calling it consultation and like group workshops because they have these useless degrees. Um, they, they would have been, they would have been making like 40,000 bucks a year, now they're making 150, 200. Yeah, look at the I mean, staff. Look at the so staff. Just... <laughs> Someone in the chat said racial dolezal. Yeah, look at the staff. Yeah, she's, yeah. yeah, she says she's biracial, but it's... Why would she put her hair, like, piled up like that? Because she's it's black. She, 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 she not wishes normal. She, was black. she wishes she was black for some reason. Just be happy with, just be happy with who you are. Why is that so hard? Why is that, why is that so difficult to do? Look at these people. Look at these four people. They're the racial experts. <laughs> God. I don't know what's worse, race to dinner or this. I think the race to dinner <laughs> chicks are more, they're more annoying though. Those you know what's are... more, what makes more of an impact than even race is just like attractiveness. You know, there's plenty of studies that attractive people do better in life. Um, oh yeah, so pretty privilege I trust, exists. I don't trust people who look like this. Yeah, it is. It's just, it's just, it's bad, man. Um, and and everywhere time. that girl, this girl goes, she will go on her pretty face. Yeah, this girl's attractive. The, 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 his, his daughter's attractive, but um, tell me how much. Well, she's only, she's only attractive for now. Just wait till they get, you know, their hands on her. Yeah, they're gonna post up really say how does feel to be black. These conversations rarely end well in their family. Caitlin says every time she tries to talk about race with Steve and her mom, Alex. They get like overwhelmed. And so they turn. They turn Bitch, it. you just said when he asked you how to be a black, he told me, shut up. What the fuck? And, and this is a girl who doesn't know what it's like to be black. Yeah, they need, they need, you know what she needs? They need to set her up with a family in the PJs for about a week. In Philly, send her to Philly. Exactly. In Hell Philly. yeah. Or NYCHA, or NYCHA in New York. Just, I, actually, I don't think she'd make it past two days. Yeah, oh, she'll no. go running home. She'll go yeah. running home, say, thank you for protecting me all these years, Father. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about race anymore. I don't want to be black anymore. <laughs> yeah. Listen, as soon as she shows up and some girl, just all half the girls hate her just because how she looks. And then, like, I'm sure she's used to girls being jealous and catty, but she's not used to girls acting on it with physical violence. She's used to girls being jealous and catty and, like, you know, like, not speaking to you or clicking up. Whispering and giggling you. and shit like that. Yeah. She's not <laughs> used to, like, the way the cattiness in the girl shit um, expresses itself in, in black. And, and she has no idea what goes on there. She doesn't see the videos. If she sees the videos, she's like, oh, well, that's just because of whatever. She doesn't want every, every, every day in George Floyd in every city for Send every black over person. Send her over that McDonald's on 145th and Broadway where that kid got stomped. Dress yes. up in nice clothes and send her on over there. 
with a, just with no a fresh idea. pair of four hundred dollar Jordans. I mean, to yeah. me, she looks she looks cute and she looks like a sweet girl, but maybe she gets overlooked at school because there's not a lot of it's you know uh, it's biracial not, kids or black kids, and she's just she doesn't understand. It's not it's not really her fault though. I think she's been brainwashed. I, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, she's young. She's, young and she's not that responsible for what she's saying, really. Yeah, let me let me move on. Let me move on. And so they turn it turns into frustration, and then they get like angry. And is that usually if it's about race or just in general? Um, race. Caitlin talked about her discomfort last session in front of Steve. I'm very closed off with my parents. (laughs) So what percent would you say? Oh my God! You're a fucking teenager. A lot. Congratulations. Got to bring that number down. So why, why do you feel uncomfortable about mm, I'm just very, like, I like making people, like, feel bad or, you know. So there's a story in her head is that we're going to make, you know, you feel bad. And that's why they've come here today, to figure out why it's so hard to talk about race and then to talk about it anyway. So what's the defense about? Let's unpack it just a little bit. I think I feel that maybe she's attacking my... Uh, parenting skills like i thought i was doing everything right you know i mean you were you raised her in one of the great safest towns in america you did great job what you you fucked up by sending her to public school the best you could giving the tools and the skills that you had at the time yeah well it makes sense but I also want you to know that she would not be who she is without you. Right, and, and I understand that, and you are correct. Karina says what they're doing, sitting here, finally talking she looks about looks extremely hate. white in that camera light. You have to be willing to stick your foot in your mouth. A lot of people will say, like, I don't talk about it because I don't want to say the wrong thing. But not talking about it, that to me creates a lot more harm and discomfort to act like it doesn't exist and as long as people keep leaning in there's so much hope it's when we shut down that nothing's possible to start listening to caitlin without getting defensive is going to take more time patience and more talking and karina wants a commitment family therapy for all three of them with a new counselor so i asked alex if you're 100 percent all in and you said yes Caitlin. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Steve. Yes. <laughs> like I, I'm so excited to see where, where each of you go with that. You have all of the right ingredients. You're just trying to figure out the recipe. I would love for her to be able to have open conversations with her dad, and for them to be in a loving. A reciprocal relationship about what it means to bring our our best selves to each other. And that includes her blackness. It includes his whiteness. There's so much that they can learn from each other. She wants to destroy that family. Now, as their final session is winding down, Karina has one last exercise for the family. A poem she's had them each write about themselves. I'd like to read a chance to introduce her to a reciprocating soul. I am empathic in love. (laughs) I understand I have the ability to make a difference. I am beautiful and kind. I wonder who I'll become. Just breathe, sis. Breathe. Take your time. I want self-love. I am beautiful and kind. I hope for self-peace. I am beautiful and kind. Hmm. Oh, she's pretty fucking conceited. (laughs) Yeah, a narcissist, man. Self, self, this, self, that, beautiful, kind, self, that, self. That's what they teach kids, all these I statements. um, They do this stuff in school to kind of break them emotionally. Do Do you think this lady is actually has any black in her? Yeah, I, I she think could tw- definitely be biracial. Yeah, I, think, think, I don't think I every, think every Friday night would be. I think twenty percent would be <laughs> a stretch. Now, Platinum Pig says Happy MLK Day. Hey, Op, do you think they will have a George Floyd Day? I think. I think had this 
it it turned like the, the the zeitgeist turned on that. But there was a moment, there was a time, even in the twenty twenty one, where I thought, damn, they might literally have a George Floyd Day one day. But I think that that ship has sailed on that. Hey, I, um, I don't know. Did you see the MLK statue in Boston? Like a like a hunk of shit. No. Man, it, it looks like somebody's holding a big. <laughs> You know what? Yeah, there's there's a there's a meme picture of like Michelle Obama. You know that that big guy who was like a porn star sitting on on the edge of the bed, but it has like oh, Michelle yeah. Obama's head, and it has that statue, <laughs> and the statue looks like his uh, pee pee. I gotta look up the MLK statue. I didn't see that. Oh, Marvel dude, this thing is horrible. Marvel it, Law says say, the, the the woman. This woman here probably gets uh, gets inoculated with uh, black uh, the the black scene every night. Marvin Law says, "If you if you this daughter is messed up, hold on. If you this daughter is messed, look up. Oh, if you think okay, if you think this daughter is messed up, look up Samantha Foss." And calling out her father at his funeral. I did a story on Samantha Foss. Oh, yeah. He did that, 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 that at, at his funeral. That that was disgusting. I hope she fucking I hope I hope she 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 runs into some really dark skinned son sisters from the hood that have just been like um all lost their boyfriends to biracial girls that same day. <laughs> Like he literally like just crosses paths with them like <laughs> right at the moment their boyfriend just told him, Look, man, I don't want you anymore. I'm with this vibration. But um yeah, salute to um salute to um um salute to you, man. I, I remember that when I did a video on that, that girl, she's disgusting. She's a disgusting little twit. JT Gwen says, How can one become a guest on the show? The link is in the description box, man. The link is in the description box. The link to the stream yard, I just put it in the comment section. Just hit the link and come on up, man. Um yeah, this is so this is renting. This is this is I just want to give you guys a a a, <laughs> a window in the rented, man. Where the, these shootings were today, man. Great community, good schools. What else is great about living in Renton and what are the drawbacks of living here? Welcome back to my YouTube channel where we talk about all things living in Washington State. Today we are covering the great city of Renton. What are the pros? What are the cons? What do you need to know before moving here? By the way, my name is Vina Jarabek. I'm a local real estate agent to Renton and I spend all my time helping people buy and sell homes in the area. With that, I've lived in Renton for about 10 years now, but there are some things that I wish were different. So let's Chat. Pros of living in Renton, very centrally located, number one. We've got Seattle's like 20 minutes away, Bellevue's 15 minutes away, Kent's 5, 10 minutes away. But my point is that Renton is right there in the middle. So 30 minutes up to Linwood, 30 minutes down to Tacoma on a good day with no traffic. 405 is close by, 167 is a few miles away, and I-90 is just north. Really? So when you're living in Renton, you really have no problem getting anywhere. To that respect, I-405 does run right through Renton, just about. So we do get caught during those peak traffic hours. And there are neighborhoods right there next to the freeway, so they deal with freeway noise. Renton School District has a good amount of schools with very high ratings. And we have great community. We have the Renton Landing City Center and then downtown Renton. Restaurants and shops and stores and grocery stores. Awesome parks. We 